welcome to Organism of the Week at the Bee Museum. I'm Bree, and I'm here to talk to you guys about the white rhinoceros. So out of all five different species of rhinoceros, this one, the white rhinoceros, is the biggest, weighing up to four tons. That's more than a pickup truck. Out of all mammals that walk on land, the white rhino is heavier than everything, except the elephant, of course. It lives in the plains of southern Africa, where, as the most social rhinoceros, it likes to travel in groups of up to 14 rhinos, called herds or crashes. They can live to be 50 years old. When you look at a white rhino, you'll probably notice right away that it's not white at all. It's gray and sometimes a little bit brown, especially after rolling in the mud to cool down. No one really knows where the white part of this rhino's name comes from. Some think that it might be a misinterpretation of the Dutch word for white, which is weit, and refers to its wide mouth. There isn't much actual evidence to support this story, but it's a good way to remember how the white rhino is different from the black rhinoceros, which is the only other rhino in Africa. The white rhino has wide, square-shaped lips, and the black rhino has pointed lips. These different lip shapes also tell us about what the African rhinos eat. So the pointed upper lip on a black rhino is prehensile, which means it can wrap around things and grip, like our hands or like a monkey's prehensile tail. It might not be good at, as good at grabbing onto things as an elephant's trunk, but it can still pluck leaves and branches from shrubs and trees. This is called browsing. You can think of it as being more of a picky eater, browsing by picking the leaves it wants to eat. Our white rhino here, also known as the square-lipped rhinoceros, has a very broad square-shaped snout and eats big mouthfuls of grass on the African savanna, which is called grazing. This mouth shape might remind you of some more familiar grazers like cows, which also use their big mouths to eat grasses. Cows often live in pastures full of grass and water, but Africa is dry and sparse, and so the white rhino sometimes needs other ways to get food. That's one purpose for these big horns on top of its nose. The white rhino can use them to dig in the hard dirt and pull up shorter grasses to find berry roots, and even to search dried up riverbeds for water. They also use their horns to intimidate predators. Once it gets a look at that sharp horn and tough skin, even lions will leave rhinos alone. The white rhino has no natural predators in the wild. Unfortunately, as you've probably heard, a white rhino's horns also lead us to one of its biggest threats. Many rhinos are poached and their horns are sold as decoration or medicine by people who claim they have healing properties, even though a rhino's horn has no medicinal value. White rhinos are especially vulnerable compared to other rhinos because they aren't as aggressive and they move together as that big crash of rhinos. It makes it easy for poachers to find them and to take several horns at once. The northern subspecies of the white rhino is most likely extinct in the wild, with only two females remaining in captivity. Luckily, thanks to protections and conservation programs, the southern subspecies is doing great. In the early 1900s, there were less than 20 individuals in the wild, but now there are over 18,000 individuals, which is more than all the other rhino species combined, and their population is still growing. It's a great success story, and hopefully we can continue to preserve these amazing animals for future generations. So that's all for today. Next week, we'll be talking about a really interesting antelope called the saiga, so make sure to check out our website and our social media pages to send us your questions. We'll see you next time.